Welcome to Academics. I will be discussing institutional theory and related concepts of institutional dispersion mechanism, loose coupling or decoupling, new institutionalism and institutional isomorphism. So if you find any value in my content, do subscribe to help my channel grow. Companies or corporations are usually influenced by other organizations and corporations and basically the institutional theory is built on this assumption that how companies respond to external pressure from other companies institutional theory studies organizational forms and explains why these forms are similar within an organizational field before moving further i will explain what actually organizational field is organizational field comprises of all the stakeholders within the ambit of some specific industry take the example of restaurant uh, industry all the restaurants they suppliers of bread chilies sauces etc they distributors like food panda and various regulatory bodies for ensuring food and service quality all these form an organizational field the main question which is the center of focus in institutional theory is that why organizations are so similar at least structurally and the level of analysis of institutional theory is an organizational field Institutional theory explains that the institutions develop coherence within an organizational field by interaction, inter-organizational structuring, and information exchange among various other stakeholders by various collaboration strategies such as joint venture and strategic alliances. And then acknowledgement is uh, acknowledgement of one another such as tabulating some competitor as a benchmark and imitating its activities and practices, which eventually develops similarity and pattern within organizational field. organizations do change not due to what organizations need but through restraints regulations organizing among the members within the field this similarity leads to institutional isomorphism which is the development of same organizational form and legitimization in one sphere of activity this isomorphism is beneficial as it makes organizations successful develop a common language provides legitimate stories and help organizations survive This institutional isomorphism is achieved via institutional dispersion mechanism which comprises of three types of pressure which develop similarity and coherence within an organization first is the regulatory or coercive pressure which constrain organizational behavior through rules norms and inducement of behavior for example regulation imposed by security exchange commission tax authorities and competition commissions etc then second is the normative pressure which guides the organizational behavior through a logic of appropriateness a sense of duty or an awareness of what one is supposed to do for example uh, corporate social responsibility initiatives such as outreach programs and environmental protection practices etc and then finally third is the cognitive or mimetic pressure in which instead of acting under the rules and obligations individuals act because of conceptions compliance occur in many circumstances because other type of behaviors are uh, inconceivable routines are followed because they are taken for granted as the as the way we do these things for example one restaurant provides a kitchen tour so the other restaurant start imitating that practice organizations being imitated are often observed as one with the highest status and success and the search for the best practices in public and private sector institutional theory also explain that humans and organizations have bounded rationality and instead of maximizing they satisfies organizations and their members are not rational actors but are affected by their environment and how things have been done before the myth about rationality is still very prevalent and it is important to appear as rational this rational behavior is there to be only viewed by regulatory bodies and employees while in reality organizations usually do not care about the rationality and everybody follows the norm that are established over time that help them perform task efficiently and effectively with maximum profit formal structure organization chart workplaces policies is not what really is done in an organization that is coordination happens rules and policies are followed and activities are aligned with formal structure doesn't have to be the case what usually discussed in meetings are not made policies and what actually done practically is not the true depiction of what were the decisions and policies thus formal structure is decoupled or loosely coupled with what really happens in the organization this decoupling leads to uh, protectionist and shady practices institutional product services techniques and programs function as powerful myths and many organizations adopt them as a mean of gaining legitimacy resources stability and hence increasing their survival prospects to maintain conformity with institutional myths organizations tend to buffer their formal structure in other word they will build gap between formal structure and actual work for example higher education commission might respond to pressure in institutional environment by making only symbolic changes in in procedures of or, uh, educational institutions while in actuality the classroom practices are same this is known as loose coupling and finally there is this concept of new institutionalism 
New institutionalism emphasizes the pervasive influence of institutions on human behavior through rules, norms, and conceptual framework. This is concomitant concept with institutional theory that focuses on the constraining and enabling effect of formal and informal rules on the behavior of individuals and groups. These are the sociologists and researchers who developed and contributed to this domain of institutional theory. That's it.